Hello there guys. Today I'm going to be showing you something a little different in the form of my top 10 games of 2012. Now this is entirely personal and based on which games I enjoyed the most this year. I have not played every game that came out, so if something seems to be missing, I either haven't played it or just don't like it too much. Anyway, on to the list. Ahead be some good games and some arbitrary numbers. Number 10, Teleglitch. This game is relatively unknown, made over a few years by a really small team. I really loved the atmosphere the game put out, even through its pixelated graphics. The top-down gameplay involves shooting various weapons at varying foes through 10 somewhat randomly generated levels. The crafting system in place has a variety of cool recipes, combining explosives with all sorts of things to make meat traps and rocket launchers. It's a mix of a roguelike and a survival horror shooter. Environments differ throughout the game, and it gets progressively harder. The imposed permadeath means you will definitely die quite a few times before completing anything. But each time you die, you'll hopefully learn something new, something that will help you in a future run. First, you'll learn to be smart with ammo, crafting supplies, and just to be cautious in general. And then you'll start learning what to use to kill whom, and simply how to aim more efficiently. It's an awesome survival experience, an awesome experience in exploration, and a game I completely recommend for anyone who enjoys a more action-y take on a roguelike. Number 9, Diablo 3. Now this is something I struggled with a bit. Diablo 3 has been known for the disappointment it caused to many fans of the series. It did lack in the story department and had a lot of controversy based on its always online system and the real money auction house that it put in place. However, based on my qualifications, which is just the fact that I enjoy a game, it has... it deserves a rank on this list. I had a hell of a lot of fun with this game and spent over 200 hours playing it. The combat is extremely fluid and is a hell of an advancement for the genre. It's a really good looking game with an extremely detailed environment. While the story was pretty simple and well just not very good in the end, the progression through all the zones is really good and going through it for the first time and then lots after that was really fun. Honestly, my lack of disappointment is probably due to the fact of not being very invested in the series. I played Diablo 2 once, and I don't think I even finished it. To me, Diablo 3 is a whole new thing, and it is just a lot of fun. That said, I'm not playing it anymore, and that's because of the auction house. It just kind of ruins the mindset of finding things for yourself when you look there and see all the amazing items that you'll never find for yourself. It becomes more about farming gold for the next big purchase, instead of the awesome feeling of discovering a great object or a great set for yourself. So with that said, I really did have a lot of fun with the game at the very start, but that did slowly decline. If you haven't played Diablo 3 and are planning to, as rare as that is I'm sure, I suggest playing it, preferably with some friends, without ever looking at the auction house. Going through Diablo's world, smashing some monsters, and then sharing loot amongst a party is extremely fun, and with that experience in mind, the game easily makes number 9 spot on this list, even though it had the potential to be a lot higher for both myself and many others. Number 8, Awesome Knots. This one is something a little less grim. Awesome Knots is a MOBA game in the spirit of games like Dota and League of Legends. Of course, it has a twist. It's also a 2D shooter and platformer with a large variety of cartoony and silly characters, fulfilling all kinds of roles and all kinds of stereotypes. 
The game has an item system in which you pick a certain set of items before going in game. So most of that side of MOBAs is gone, you don't need to worry about that micromanagement in items. It's purely fun gameplay, shooting bots and enemy players in a 3v3 game. Each character has its own unique abilities, playstyle, and customization. There's a few maps that offer a couple of differences, but it's just a backdrop to the fun combat. Additionally, the devs of this game are pretty awesome. They add characters regularly at no price, and they're generally pretty awesome. Several of them have been voiced by famous YouTubers, and the community support in general is, again, awesome. The game is available on consoles, but I believe the better version is on the PC. Awesome Knots is a great take on the MOBA genre, and personally my favorite title within the genre. It's stylized, full of character, and above all, fun. Number 7, Torchlight 2. This year has been sort of the year of ARPGs, hasn't it? While Diablo 3 was the actual successor to Diablo 2, Torchlight 2 seems to be the spiritual successor to it. That isn't just some unbacked opinion either. Much of the team that created the original first two Diablos at Blizzard North went on to work at Runic, creators of the two Torchlight games. The first Torchlight was similar in scale and gameplay to the first Diablo, with its one big dungeon. The second, released this year, is closer to Diablo 2. For this reason, fans of that game may enjoy it quite a bit, and I enjoyed it quite a bit too. While not quite as smooth as Diablo 3's, its combat is quite fun with some interesting abilities. The character customization offered in this title is sort of a traditional skill tree, and it offers more permanent ways to change a character to go with what you'd like. The other half of that comes from the items. I really find in this game that the items that you find really matter. You'll consistently find items that are both useful and interesting. Instead of a 2% chance to do whatever, you'll get a 25 or 50% chance to stun or freeze. It's noticeable and it adds to character building. The story itself isn't something I paid too much attention to, but from what I did of it, it's probably better than Diablo 3's. The environments, animations, etc. are not really up to par, but they are still pretty nice looking in the end. It also comes at a nice price point of $20. I wholeheartedly recommend this for action RPG fans as a fun and deep gameplay experience that comes to you with both single player and land capabilities. Number 6, Hotline Miami. Now this is quite an awesome game. Hotline Miami is a top-down game in which you play what seems to be a psychopath in an extremely violent manner. The game does that violence really, really well. It's also really difficult. In my impressions of the game, I noted that while it can get really hard, it does that right as well. The levels are completed in such a way that while enemies will kill you in one hit, upon death you respawn right back at the beginning with no delay. Since the levels are small, it's rare to feel angry at dying, and more common to come out with new knowledge of how to kill every living thing inside the building at hand. That task can be completed in differing ways, with more of a stealthy and tactical approach, or with some big guns. And that's another strength. Whichever playstyle fits you better, you should still enjoy it. That violent, difficult, and fast-paced gameplay comes wrapped in a complete package. The weird acid trip visuals put everything in a nice perspective, and the music is simply excellent, and goes perfectly with the game. There's a thin narrative running along the game, and it ends quite nicely, but a lot of the narrative points you right back at the bloody acts you're doing and at the gameplay itself. Hotline Miami is a good demonstration of difficulty, it's a remarkable show of violence, and it's a damn good game.
Number five, The Walking Dead. Playing this thing, I had one of the most emotional experiences ever inside a game. The story is where The Walking Dead shines, and I think it does do it in a way that wouldn't work in a non-interactive medium. The episodic game, spread into five separate chapters, builds attachment to the characters, and while that's not an objective statement, I sure felt it. There's some interesting twists and turns, all emphasized by the simple combat mechanisms and a nice dialogue option system. Little things help to that effect, such as the fact that you can almost always stay silent instead of making a decision. Sometimes, with how horrible the options all are, silence seems like the only thing that's acceptable. The only reason this thing isn't even higher up on the list than it is, is, well, the gameplay. It's a 3D point and click game, and the actual gameplay involves simple puzzles and a lot of QTEs. It's not all that exciting, to me personally at least. The story and setting does make up for it, and for anyone who really enjoys that kind of point and click adventure style game, The Walking Dead could easily be something simply amazing. For me, it's still pretty excellent, and one of the best story driven games I've ever played. Sure is better than certain other zombie games of late. It costs 25 bucks, you can get it on whatever you want, even iOS, so go play it immediately. Number 4, FTL Faster Than Light. Now this game is just great in so many ways. Like the first game on the list, it's a take on the roguelike genre. There's been plenty of that in the last couple of years or so, but this one went a step further. It's a roguelike crossed with a spaceship management sim. You traverse a randomly generated universe, trying to deliver a package, and running away from an incoming rebel fleet. It involves managing a ship, deciding on how to upgrade it, both with internal parts and getting new weapons and drones. You manage a crew, who can man different parts of your ships, repair parts, and even teleport onto enemy ships to cause some chaos over there. You have oxygen to worry about, engines, piloting, weapon systems, door control, opening airlocks to wipe out fires. The gameplay is generally tense, and gets more and more so as you go on. Random events happen to keep gameplay fresh, graphical capabilities are simple but they do the job, presenting you any additional information you need in the form of text. FTL offers a hell of a lot of replayability, personally I have put in some hours and haven't even managed to beat it yet, but even if you do manage that, there are multiple ships with various different configurations to play with, as well as varying achievements and of course, fully randomized gameplay. It's an example of a Kickstarter project gone very right, and is an amazing game that's truly new and unique in a lot of ways. Number 3, Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Chivalry is a decapitation simulator. It's also a medieval first person combat game with various modes and four classes. The game excels at providing a brutal experience in both melee and to a limited degree ranged combat. You have your man at arms, your fast vanguard, your armored knight, and your trusty archer. Together they strike a good balance for what's probably the main mode, team objective. It puts objectives together in interesting maps that progress quite well. Those objectives can be things like push a cart from X to Y, and then they can be things like kill all the peasants in this village. Very chivalrous indeed. Other than that little bit of flavor, the fighting itself is chaotic, but really fun and leads to some awesome moments. Gory visuals add to all of this, as well as does the, some nice music and various humorous voices. This is another game that has a great dev team, working constantly on their product as well. I've picked up this as one of my top three games of the year, as it's some of the most pure fun I've had in multiplayer gaming in a long time. Stabbing, shooting, chopping off limbs, Chivalry is just a great game.
Number two, Guild Wars 2. I struggled on whether or not to put this above Chivalry, as they're both multiplayer games that I have primarily played in PvP. However, Guild Wars 2 is a bigger overall product, and from what I've played of the PvE side of it, it is pretty nice as well. That PvE side takes place in a great world filled with dynamic events that you can wander into and then help out with in various ways. Under everything, it's not all that different from MMOs of the past, but it adds a lot of polish and changes just enough to keep it interesting. It's not a revolution, but it is an evolution. Now where I believe Guild Wars 2 really does make some real progress is PvP. There are two types of PvP in the game, the first being World v World v World. In this, servers fight it out against each other in a huge battlefield to take fortresses and such with both players and siege weapons. That kind of server versus server gameplay on that scale is really a neat idea to be explored and from what I've played of it, it's done pretty well. Of course, both PvE and World of World were not what I have spent most of my time in Guild Wars 2 doing. It's the second kind of PvP, the structured PvP, which I've really enjoyed. I find it generally well balanced, although of course there are a lot of complaints, and the combat system I find goes really well with PvP action. Character customization allows different builds for each class, and some fun gameplay with them all. The game has a more casual AV8 mode, and then a tournament mode in which 5v5 is actually pretty competitive if you get good teams with good communication together. There are three competitive maps to play on and that are well balanced and then a couple more newer maps that are currently still only in the AV8 pool. What makes the whole thing really interesting is that it's kind of a separate game. You keep your character's name in the structured PvP but none, none of your level or stats or gear gets transferred over, it's a completely separate thing, and that makes it completely fair, and not unbalanced by the PvE side of the game. I've spent a lot of time playing the SPVP side of the game, and for the fun I've had on it, I've got to call it my second favorite game of the year. And now, for my number one game of the year. Compared to the other games on this list, which I've played for up to hundreds of hours, I really didn't play this game for long. 90 minutes is about how long this game takes, but I enjoyed every second of it. Number one, my game of the year is Journey. PSN exclusive from that game company, Journey doesn't contain a single word of English, but its story was still extremely compelling. In terms of emotional experience, it's comparable to The Walking Dead. Personally, I feel it's superior. And then there's the artwork. The game is absolutely beautiful. Environments may vary slightly throughout the game, going from wide expanses of sand dunes to underground passages to snowy plains. It all looks absolutely amazing in its detail and animation quality. Of course, while Journey is something that can easily be considered an art game, I feel it's an art game done right. By that, I mean it's actually a game. No, there isn't really any way to fail, and not much in terms of actual challenge, but I don't see that as a requirement for a game. There is that level of interactivity which helps you solve some simple puzzles as well as make use of some simple gameplay mechanics, but above all just allows you to interact with the world. Throughout the game you have one goal. You see it from the start. A mountain in the distance. It's mysterious. But it's a constant thing, and it's what you're journeying to. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but the game's ending is really good, and makes it quite worth it. However, that's not what it's all about. It is about the journey. Incredible artwork, amazing music, and varied gameplay that's just pure simple fun and extremely immersive. Every minute playing this game I loved. I plan on replaying this thing multiple times in the future, although that won't replace that first roller coaster of an experience. It may not seem worth it on the surface to pay $15 for a 90 minute game, but I, I really don't care. This is an awesome game, and if you own a PS3, or know anyone who does, you should do yourself the pleasure of playing it.
And with that said, we've concluded my top 10 games of 2012. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to play some more awesome games and make some more good new content in the new year. Personally, I'm off to Hawaii in a couple days, so you probably shouldn't expect anything coming for around a week. But after that, in the new year, I hope to, well, do some fun stuff. That's about all for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Maple Dungeons, and I will see you next time.